Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Crypto Oracles. So today I want to take a look at the current market state after the Russia Ukraine crisis news, after the Fed news and see what's going on and how the market is reacting, how Bitcoin is reacting, how stocks are reacting to the latest news. And as for the classical questions, you know, is it a good time to buy and enter the dip? Should I be selling the cryptos that I didn't sell earlier? Should I be moving my money to something less risky? How high is the volatility and what am I going to be doing next so don't forget to subscribe and smash the like button if you're new to the channel definitely don't forget to join the discord we'll be talking non-stop on our channels about what's going on in the current days we've been following all sort of trends and discussing together what's the best next move so let me get started right away first thing i would like to share with you today as we always do is the fear and grid index so of course fear in the markets right now is of that uh, is extreme extreme fear um so out of the zero to 100 scale we're at 20 and we've seen this in the past of course so if we take the last three months um we are just about dipping now to one of the lowest points we've been so beginning of february we were pretty much at the same levels uh, in terms of how people felt uh, about the markets now and here's the three months um so of course we haven't really seen much uh positive movement in the market since the peak in end of december and we were hoping to have broken a trend line a long-term trend line recently but we now retested that trend line i'm going to take a look at the charts in a moment so one thing that i want to highlight that i've been discussing a lot with the people in the discord is um is Bitcoin really the digital gold that we promised it was going to be, right? So what is happening right now, especially when there is sense of a possible war and you know international conflicts, we see gold spiking upwards and gaining its value, getting in value. Now, with Bitcoin, we would respect it something similar if it is indeed the store of value that we've been promised it to be. And if you take a look at a correlation Bitcoin and gold, it's pretty much just one of its lowest points, minus 0 0.014. And this chart, of course, the higher you get to one, the higher the correlation is. And if you look at the price as well, the price of gold has been going up steadily for the last um, couple of weeks. And the price of Bitcoin has been decreasing in the last week quite drastically. So, of course, uh, this doesn't mean that Bitcoin is not a good investment. Uh, in my opinion, it means that the market is still not as mature as the gold market and that is going to mature over time. So this is another reminder that we are really, really early, but I think it's a good reminder to anybody who's saying that Bitcoin is the same as digital gold, that this is not yet the truth. This is not yet the case, at least in my opinion. So if we take a look at the uh, latest news that we have, uh, of course, everything now revolves around the Ukraine conflict and how countries are reacting to that. So uh, let me switch to, you know, the main article that we could take a look at together. What is the support line for Bitcoin during this crisis, right? We're talking about bouncing back from 38,000, which is the lo this long-term trend line. Actually, let me switch the chart and take a look at the chart quickly. We're going to come back to that. But as we've seen here, uh, let's let's. The uh, just one second until the page reloads but as we've seen here uh we've seen bitcoin basically breaking down uh, breaking out of this downward channel and then effectively sorry i'm going to switch back to the articles and effectively then uh breaking out of this downward channel and then it looked like it was going to keep going up and up trending for a while and uh, it was going to be a good opportunity to dollar cost average but actually because of the latest news we went back to retest the downtrend line and we bounced back from that line so if we take a look here um, so Cointelegraph is actually showing us something similar. We can see that we were in this downward channel that we broke in the last couple of weeks since mid-January up to mid-February. And now because of the latest news, we're retesting this $48,000 zone and we're bouncing swiftly out of that, which is coincidentally uh, the same as the downtrend line, the upper downtrend line of the downtrend channel that we just got out of. So we're retesting at 38,000 zone and uh, one interesting thing to see is that the worst months we ever had was back in 2018, where Bitcoin closed for four consecutive months in red candles. And if we close this month in red as well, this will be the worst month since 2018 bear market, which, you know, if you even if you just bought uh, the you know, November, October, you're still very much in profit. Um, sorry, November, October 2021, of course, you're still very much in profit. So if you even you still bought at the peak of 2018, you would be 2x from that point. Uh, so where do we go from here? 
Well, we don't really need to worry and agree on this until we stay above the 30,000. 30,000 is being a critical support level. And as long as we hold 30,000, we are good. After 30,000, we're back to the 20,000 uh, zone. And that would be an incredibly good buying opportunity if you are long for the space. Now, uh, a couple of tweets that we posted during the week. So I definitely recommend following us on Twitter. Um, we're talking about USDT dominance making all time eyes. Uh, historically, when Tether dominance reaches 4.5% to 5%, it marks a bottom of Bitcoin. And we can see that here. This is the uh, price of Bitcoin. And we can see here at the bottoms. And this seems like sentiment reaches peak fear um, around that level. And we've seen, I've just seen here, uh, that we're reaching peak fear or nearly close to peak fear, or one of the lowest levels of fear. Um, since November last year. So uh, will this be the case once again in Bitcoin? Well, could be likely, but once again, we've seen a lot of volatility in the last couple of days. So I would be very, very careful opening any trades. I'll wait for confirmation and we're gonna take a look at the charts now. Uh, one thing I wanna share with you is how you can actually see how much liquidity we have at different levels. That means how many orders are open that can be consumed before we fall to the next level. And what we've seen there is basically two big support levels, 34,000 and 38,000, where there is liquidity to make us bounce back. And I'm just gonna open the Ethereum chart um, to give you a different perspective, but this is very similar to Bitcoin. Uh, Ethereum, for example, you can see here has a very strong liquidity, uh, has a lot of liquidity and a lot of um, bid orders at around $2,500, so 2,000 orders at $2,500, which means that if the price crashes back down to $2,000, um, $2,500, $2, then it's likely to bounce back up. And we've already seen this once and we still have orders open at that level. And it's the same for Bitcoin at the $30,000 and $35,000 zones. And let's take a look at the charts together. Um, there we go. So now if we take a look at Bitcoin, this is what we were looking at uh, last week. So we're looking at this and we're looking at how we broke this, um, this downtrend. So we're in this downtrend for a long time. And then finally, we broke up from the downtrend. And what we're thinking was going to happen was that we were going to consolidate. And we were looking at this um, reverse head and shoulders pattern, which is usually a very bullish signal. So we're looking at this pattern here. And the reason why that didn't actually work out the way we thought was because um, for this to be an accurate pattern, you, you would like to have the left shoulder lowest level to be matching the right shoulder, which we didn't see. Uh, and that, you know, that means it wasn't an accurate uh, indicator as much as we want it to be. But ideally what I thought would happen to here would have been retesting this trend line and then breaking the next resistance. Well, actually because of the Ukraine Russia conflict, we've seen, uh, of course, a downtrend and we're now testing the uh, downtrend line of the channel. If we stay above the trend, trend, trend line, now um, also looking at volume down here, it is a really, really good buy opportunity. Of course, this is a very uh, careful move that any trader should do, which is, you know, making sure that you have stop loss just below this line, but this indicates it's a good moment to buy. And then as well, if you look, take a look at the stock, um, Scastic RSI, it's one of the lowest levels, which means we've been resetting momentum as reset. Uh, and uh, the price is, you know, it's a good, it's a good entry point. If you look at the last time we had this at this such a low level, uh, it was exactly when we bounced back and broke the channel. And then from that point onwards, if we just take a look at what the price range was, we went up by about 40%. So if we trace the same level, then what I'd like to see, which is likely um, what could happen, is that if we go up 45%, we basically hit the next um, resistant level, which is what I would love to see. And of course, depends on microeconomics and news. Let's take a look at a couple of altcoins uh, before we close the video for today. So AVEX is one of the altcoins I've been close, um, following very closely. Um, AVEX has been bouncing quite sharply uh, in the last uh, runs and in the last accumulation phases. So we highlighted a buy zone here at about $78. And for everybody that follow us on this trade, we went up 27%. Um, and we suggested, you know, a possible take profit at the resistance zone uh, of $97, which was spot on. We bounced back. Now, I expected this to bounce back from the support line, now, of course, because of the Ukraine conflict. We didn't see that. We broke below. And we're now pretty much just accumulating. So if we move this, um, this possible entry box, entry area, I think we are accumulating in this zone here. 
which has some support you can see from this point of view. Now, of course, what's hard to read at this moment is what the current trend is going to look like. Uh, let's take a few more. Let's take um, let's take a few of the big ones. So let's take a look at Luna, for example, or Matic, and let's just go for a few of them. So Luna here. So Luna is a slightly different story. I think we found support. Uh, Luna was very much overheated. We found a good support level. Uh, so we turn support resistance. There we go. Um, and if I just clear my chart a little bit more, uh, I highlighted a support zone here, very strong support zone. We are down trending in the channel, but then we also have this white line here that indicates a very good support. And you can see here we, we bounce swiftly on the daily chart on that line. Uh, so Luna also really, really good opportunity for the long term. If you look at the uh, four hours chart, we can see, of course, it's being impacted as the rest of the markets, but uh, still very swift downs from this morning when he hit $48, $48 all the way to 55. Um, so Sunbooks, so we look at the metaverse a little bit. Sunbook also rebounced from uh, its lowest point at 283, and we're now trading at uh, 310. Sunbooks uh, could easily retest the two for 23 to $25 zone. So I don't want to hold you too much with the charts. We're going to do a separate video. We're going to do a live video uh, nearly every week from now on, looking at charts together. Uh, so definitely a good buying opportunities, but also a lot of volatility. Uh, I just want to show you what happened yesterday. We were on a call with the rest of the team as well. And we're just looking at charts together. And we're looking uh, very closely, of course, at charts as news for um, the Ukraine conflict where it coming out. And then if we look at the 15 minutes chart on Bitcoin from yesterday, the volatility was absolutely insane. We saw spikes of volatility uh, of 5% in a matter of 15 minutes or 10, 15 minutes, which is absolutely crazy. And uh, it was really, really hard, of course, to do any trades at that point in time. Um, so I think that's it for today, guys. Thank you very much for listening. Thank you very much for sticking around. Don't forget to subscribe and smash the like button, and I will see you in the next video.